now watching West Harper Community Sorry. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to our talks. <clears throat> My name is Joanne Bauer. And I'm Mike DeRosa. Joanne, why don't you tell our audience about some upcoming art events here in the Greater Hartford area? Sure, I'd love to. We have a guest today, Steve Fournier. He and I are going to talk primarily during the session, during this uh, half hour, about an upcoming event called Art Around the West End. This will be the second annual time that we've done this with 15 artists. Prior to that, though, I want to mention two other events. Back in June, we had an artist, you'll remember, Mike, we had an artist here call, uh, named Patricia Corbett. And she has recently opened a gallery called Camelot Gallery in Wallingford. And it had a soft opening, and then we'll have another opening September 1st. So anyone who wants to see her work, it's on display there at Camelot Gallery in Wallingford. The other event that's very important to the West Hartford audience is is, um, is Art Walk, and that happens uh, through the West Hartford Art League. This will be the 10th year that they've done Art Walk, and some of you will remember that at one point in time, it uh, took place in storefronts in the center. Now it primarily happens at the West Hartford Art League on Buena Vista Road. So that will be the second weekend in September. The event in the West um, end of Hartford will be the third weekend of September. And I just want to say that during the Art Walk event, we'll have, there will be displays by many, many local artists. But in addition, they have children's activities. They do the sidewalk chalk competition. There will be a community project, such as there was last year. In fact, the community project last year has been hanging in Town Hall. It was a painting that was um, composed by many, many people who came to the event. And in addition, there will be art for sale and many, many activities that's, that are family friendly. So that's going on then. Yeah, so on our program today, we're going to, as Joanne said, talk to Joanne Bauer and Steve Fournier about their work and ask them hopefully some relevant questions. Why don't we start with uh, Joanne. Joanne, maybe you could talk about this piece mask that's sitting right there in front of you. Sure, I would love to. So if I could just say briefly about Art Around the West End, that's an opportunity for 12 to 15 artists who live in the neighborhood to exhibit their work right in their homes. And last year, Steve and I both participated, and we will both participate again, as well as being on the committee that created it. So this piece right here is called Mask for Emmett Till. And it's something that I created for a special exhibit that was down at the Hartford Public Library last uh, late summer into the fall. And this candle that I've included here actually came from a vigil that I attended for Troy Davis. So during the watch that was over at Central, um, Central Connecticut State University during the time that we were waiting to see if, in fact, he was going to be saved or executed, there was a vigil. And, and what I do typically is incorporate lots of found materials into my artwork. I kind of call it remnant art. On the mask itself, this is a collage, and it includes the face of Trayvon Martin and Troy Davis. And there's also an, an image of me where I was in whiteface. So this is one of my political, more political pieces. 
Now, also, uh, many of your pieces, Joanne, are scrapbooks, right? What did you get the true. idea for scrapbooks? Where did That's that come true. From? Um, I think because my art tends to be about losses and about finding things. And so some of what scrapbooking is is about collecting and saving and cataloging and, and really cherishing things that you have found or photos or um, memorabilia. So rather than scrapbooking the way many people do it, mine is actually art. So it's translated into artwork. So for example, this was one of the earlier scrapbooks that I, have, that I had done. And it, it includes photo transfers. That's a special process that I don't do much of any longer because it involves Polaroid transfer, Polaroid paper. And, but anyway, this is a scrapbook of handmade paper. I made the paper. And there are, I believe, five images. Most of them are photo transfers. And they're included in this. And this was created actually when a relationship ended. So that's how my art has something to do with loss and has something to do with found. Right. And that was part of your uh, exhibit, Textures of Transformation, that's correct. right? That's because correct. you're transforming uh, feelings, emotions into both art and sculpture, right? That's correct. Yeah, so it's kind of neat. Um, are you, you also mentioned that. Um, in the past that you know, you're informed by feminist philosophy and aesthetics. What do you mean by that? Right. Well, I have been a feminist since my 20s. And so what I meant by that is, for example, I think that the theme of a scrapbook is very female. And in, in the, to the extent that it's about transformation, I think of it as being about feminism. And the, the paper here, being handmade paper, I tend to think of that more as a female enterprise, historically. That's something that women have done. They've made paper. Um, so that's some of what it's about. And then just the compiling of found objects, all of that speaks to me of um, principles of feminism, really. And kind of photos also as part of memory, visual photos of what yes, you... Yes, that, that is how I think about it. But in many cases, for example, there's a piece here that's a photo transfer that I then had to... That, no, I didn't have to. I chose to scrape the back away and to alter it. So I would say... I would like to tell you about how I used to do these photo transfers with a friend of mine, and he had the equipment. He would bring it. We would do it in the kitchen of, at my house. And he, very different from me, was always looking for the perfect result. I was looking for the imperfect result, or the result that I could alter and change and be creative with and put into a larger collage. So I was happy with whatever the result might be, because it always represented for me something that I needed to be creative with. So it was serendipitous, and it was intuitive, yes, right? Yes, exactly. I think so. Yes, I think Rather intuitive. than vision and, and in place, stuck in space and time, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, very interesting. Um, what other piece do you have for us today? So let's see. I have a piece that's called Full Moon. And that is actually a collage with a technique that I've, I've used often. And it's a simple technique. I don't even think I should reveal it. But it's a very, very simple technique that alters the paper. And then I included found objects. So it's an image of an aging couple. And there's a button on there that I think of as the full moon. Right. And what does the full moon uh, evoke in you in terms of the emotion, the, the intensity of the, of the two people? Or is that what it is? Or? The, the moon, of course, is a very female image. Right. Just through, through history, it has been. Right. And then in addition, it has a romantic element for me, too. And I think of the fullness of life being conveyed in this dancing couple. They're probably in their 80s. Mm. And so it's a, um, I think it's an optimistic piece. Yeah. Steve, why don't you talk a little bit about a couple of your pieces uh, and what your work's all about? Well, I paint, 
and I consider myself a painting hobbyist. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've achieved, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'll let somebody else decide if they can call me an artist or what I do, whether it's art or not. And, and you know, I've, I've, my, um, my struggle has been to uh, learn how to do this. I, was, right. I never had really, uh, in from, um, <laughs> I remember Miss Schaffer, she was my uh, elementary school art teacher, and um, to say that she was critical would be an understatement. <laughs> yes, she, I had one like yeah, that she, too. <laughs> she said, you know, this the, a mess was a general her general cool. impression of stuff that I did, and she was right. You know, I was a sloppy kid. I think it has to do with uh, probably uh, some uh, trauma in my childhood, most likely during the uh, mm -hmm. during the anal stage. You know, <laughs> I say, I say. this I, I'm guessing that this is probably what happened. So, and, and you know, uh, if that happens to you then you do, you become a creative person, you know. I mean, it, it, sure, you begin sure. with uh, fecal matter and then you work your way up to All paint right. and things like that. And so I think that's probably what happened to me, although I don't know that for sure because my mother really wouldn't confide that in me. Uh, but it, it's been, uh, for me, uh, a challenge. Learn how to do this. You know, I thought, um, uh, even from the time that I was a child, that I could create things, you know. And, um, and so uh, I think the first painting I ever did, the first drawing I ever did was from Playboy calendar. Uh -huh. And you know, I wanted to reproduce what was on that calendar uh, just, from, just to show that I could H do How it. do you mean reproduce? <laughs> <laughs> right, in pencil, yeah, that was, yeah, that uh, was okay. what I was doing. Yeah. And um, so I thought I could do that, and, and it wasn't that good, you know, it was, um, I don't remember which movie star it was, somebody that I worshipped at the time. I was in the service, I was lonely, I was overseas, and I had to have something to do, and so that was something to do. Somebody sent me that calendar, you know, and so, so I, I started. And I said, do you, you know, still maybe. Do you have that image, Steve? Uh, somewhere I have it. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, we'll have to dig that well, my out. My mother had given me a set of uh, pastels, and, I, and I, I did it in pastels, and it's, a, it's <clears throat> kind of a sexy shot, you know. I, I don't remember. <laughs> well, one of the, one of the, the problems artist with artists is that we're always faced with this reality of who is an artist and who isn't. And there's all of these litmus tests about, you know, who is real and who isn't. Uh, and, you know, and, and they once asked Man Ray, the famous photographer, well, do you think that photography is art? And he said, oh, no. He said, art is much better. I mean, photography is much better than art. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I think the problem is how you define it. So it's, you know, some people say it's craft. Some people say it's um, inspiration. Some people say it's medium and it's you know it's a vision or whatever like in your pieces you use a lot of watercolor right well these are the two that i've brought are both watercolor and um but they don't you know i'm, I'm as i say i'm self-taught and so my technique if you can call it a technique is idiosyncratic it really is something that uh, you don't see people doing i i paint over stuff uh in, in watercolor and right. you, you know it's um probably it would be frowned on if anybody saw me doing it but but the, the pictures come out uh, almost as I want them to, you know, and so that I, I feel as if I'm accomplishing something. And I'm learning, I, I'm learning over the past 60, yeah. year, 50 years, really, I've been learning how to do this. Now, but I don't, I do craft, too. You know, I, I have um, every winter uh, around Christmas time, I make uh, 20 or 30 little gingerbread houses. They only stand about this tall. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've been doing since my kids were small, and so I could give them to... Everybody. Some Instead with of, popcorn on them, right? Uh, there are uh, uh, gumdrops gum and um, candy canes and a little sprinkling of sugar over the right. top. And they're, they're small. And I they're actually have a, a, a picture of a, of a little neighborhood of these that I lit up. So is this edible art? Oh, yes, definitely. Well, you've eaten one. Yes. Oh, right. it's still, <laughs> they're that's delicious, right? right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The recipe you start with must be amazing. Because well, it's the an old, just itself. an old Fanny Farmer delicious. recipe. So but while we nice digest that, mo that <laughs> thought, no, I'm only kidding. Um, what, so these two pieces, they're very connected to something that Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm going to, they'll be on the art walk, in, uh, mm -hmm. the, Hart the Hartford art walk, the West End, uh, what we call art around the West End. I'm on that committee too. Right. And um, that was one of the things that got me uh, West End involvement. I've, I've been living in the West End for 50 something years, but I hadn't really been involved in things the last few years. I was busy with uh, practiced law, you know, for a, mm -hmm. a number of years and uh, quit that. And so I've had a little bit more time and I got involved in, in neighborhood things and uh, found out that some of the people in the neighborhood think that I'm an artist. You know, I do these snow sculptures in the winter. Uh, they're big. Right. And, uh, you know, oh, you're an artist, Steve. So uh, 
I'm for that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take that criticism. <laughs> so, you know, it inspired me to do more, this encouragement that I got from people in the neighborhood. And, and I yeah. was, um, I painted a garden in the neighborhood during our garden walk that we had uh, in June. And so I'm, and I'm going to be on the art walk. And I'll have these two pictures. They're both pictures of Elizabeth Park. One is the stone bridge uh, that, that goes over the pond. And the other is the rose garden from a particular view that I, that I like with a park bench in it. And they're, they're um, I, I go to, I live just a couple of blocks from sure. Elizabeth Park and I go there quite a bit and I like to go there at the height of the, of the, the rose season, which would be about. So it almost looks like Monet, right? With the lily uh, pads and, and well, the bridges I see. Wouldn't that is that there be a nice? bridge? Is that a bridge on there? It's a stone bridge, yeah. Stone bridge. That's what it is, yeah, stone yes. bridge that, that, that is, um, you know, I've, I've known that stone bridge since I was 14 years old. So talk about bridges, would you? About <laughs> well, there's this, well, I, I, do will, flowers. I will talk about a bridge. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, well, we're making the bridge here, here yes. making the bridge. I was over to Elizabeth Park yesterday to uh, the Pond House for brunch. And someone pointed out to me the stone bridge, the really, the stone bridge with the massive stones that's just architecturally stuck into place and just the... Um, the achievement of that. And I have to tell you, I've been walking by that bridge for decades and I hadn't really thought about sure. it in quite some time. So Steve has, is that the bridge that you have in your piece? Because I can't yes. see it right now. It is that I, one. I can, I can uh, you know, okay. pick it up here. Yes, let's yeah, see. Pick it and up we'll, and show we'll, it to the we'll audience put it, here, you know, we'll so put it right here in my be. lap and you can right. have a look at it. Yeah, I mean, right. I think it's, it, it's a it, picture that I took. It's, it's, a photo, it's from a photo that right. I took just a few right. weeks ago, you know, right. and um, it's... Uh, well, one of the one of the big problems in art is that people are always concerned about, well, did you do this from scratch? But we know that the great ma the great masters from the 16th century had all sorts of devices that they used to create, you know, realistic scenes. So I really find the idea that if you use, you know, these accoutrements to reach some the level of realism within the structure of your painting, that somehow this is illicit. This is nonsense. It's ahistorical and never took place in the first place. All the great artists had these, uh, uh, I guess they're called obscuras, where they would um, use uh, lenses to project um, you know, various items so they could get perspective. I haven't done that. I, I, I've, right. I've done it. But I did you a have sketch. a picture and you start yeah, I started with a photo and, and then right. uh, made right. a sketch. The photo was actually you know, smaller than this. Made a sketch and then painted it in as you might do a, right. a paint by number or something. I had a, right. I had a, a, a number of colors that I, you can see I'm a green guy, you know. I'm, right, right. <laughs> have a few greens in there. Let me you know. ask both of you, when you complete a work, and I know this is what I do, I like, wow, it's done. And it seems <laughs> like it's almost magical because you've done something, and in some ways you look at it and you say, did I really do that? Did anybody, do you ever get that feeling? Well, I would say, as you're talking, Mike, I was thinking about when I would first create art and I wasn't convinced that I was an artist. Sure. And, and so it would be a struggle for me. It was really hard work because it was hard psychologically. And also, I didn't know when it was finished. I have oftentimes had that experience of not knowing when a piece is finished. And so then I would add some more and play around. I think now that I've had success and been juried in shows, I'm much more willing to trust my intuition and to say, yes, it's finished. But is a piece ever really finished? I mean, I look at some of, like, for example, um, uh, ancient pieces that are fairly important. They seem to change historically. <clears throat> I mean, for example, uh, uh, El Greco's, the opening of the fifth um, seal, you know, it was some kind of religious thing oh, right. and then the 20th century comes along and these people grab it and turn it into something completely different so is a piece ultimately you know uh finished when you say it's finished or is it finished when the people in the world say it's finished the observers well the i w i do want to make the contrast between a piece of visual art for myself and a poem because right. i also write poetry right. and when i write poetry that seems to oftentimes not be finished and goes through revision 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 in fact right. over seven poems i looked at yesterday <laughs> and i'm changing right. things whereas with art i understand what you're saying and sometimes the 
the visual piece is complete and not so easy to go back in and make changes. But then the audience brings their perceptions, their, right. their, all their life experience, really, to the piece. And they project whatever their feelings and emotions are Absolutely. on and come away with a different meaning, which I think is just as valid as we putting down something on a piece of paper or on a canvas or saying a poem or doing whatever, you know. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the whole idea of what, where you want to go with this stuff. I mean, you, you're doing watercolors now. Do you want to stay in watercolors? Well, I want, my motive is always to, uh, always has been to, to capture this beautiful, whatever the beautiful thing is, uh, to my satisfaction so that right. I can have it forever. You know, the Rose Garden is in bloom for about a week, week right, and a half right. every year. And, you know, you can take a photograph. A photogra photographs are nice, but it's, it's only as good as uh, the light was. And, but you can, with a picture, you can, with a, with a painting, you can make it the way you want it. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I, and I have a, d accomplished that from time to time. If you, you know, you'll, you, you have a violet, this was one of my first, I paint, paint flowers, individual mm -hmm. flowers, quite a bit. And so you have a violet. They're out for, what, about a week and a half, two weeks right. in the springtime. They're the, pretty much the first flower that's oh, out there. One of my favorite mm -hmm. flowers. They come in a, a several different uh, shades of purple. Right. And, um, and so when they come out, you know, I'm, I have a, a, a week sure. to paint one or two weeks to, to paint one. And then, then they're gone. And you want to keep it, you know. I lilacs, what well, they're out for like uh, four or five days, and then they're gone. And so I've painted many lilacs because I don't want that lilac to be gone. And and so that's my my motive is to is to keep the beautiful thing to capture beautiful. it. Yeah, to capture it as right. best I can. I fail a lot, right. but uh, you know, a few times I've succeeded, and I'm learning. I'm still learning how to do it, and I'll be learning how to do it for the rest of my life, and that's my motive. Yeah, I think, I to, think you're hitting on, on a very, doing that. I think you're hitting on a very important point, which is that a lot of the subject of art is very ephemeral in, you know, nature. You know, if you're doing nature, it's very ephemeral. It's here for a few moments, and then it transforms itself into something else, like a river. I often I go down Route 9, I'm looking at the Connecticut River, and during the winter it looks one way, and during mm -hmm. the summer it looks another way, in the fall it looks a different way. So it's very um, uh, transformative in the sense that it's constantly changing. And I think that's the rhythm of what I think artists tend to do is to, you know, to kind of capture, as you say, that special moment when a flower comes out for a short period of time and then try to you know, put it on into, through a medium into uh, you know, an art piece. Right. And then uh, give it away. Oh, yeah. you know? also, that's what whatever, I like to do. Whatever. Yeah, also, exactly. for me, Steve, you are my neighbor and uh, friend, and for me, when I look at your pieces, I, I think that it, it really captures for me a feeling about Elizabeth Park that a pho photograph wouldn't do. And exactly. I've lived near the park for many, many decades, and I just uh, think this is so richly oh, evocative yeah, it's very beautiful. and feels like a summer day. Well, thanks. At the, at the park. Yeah. Uh, and a relaxing one at that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> and I mean, a cool, I, yeah. cool one at that. Not forbidding at all. <laughs> it, it, it's not a little bit forbidding. It's not saying, this is a dark place, don't go in here. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely right. not. Yeah. I love yeah. the, the water, the reflection. And the light. Here, and up, the light. Uh, yeah. Well, exactly. it was a lot of fun exactly. to do it. And uh, I'll be, uh, that's, that's a scene that I'll do again, you know, because I, I love that scene and, and have for uh, Right, and it kind of brings the whole, brings your eye right into the center Right. You know, it kind of like it zeroes right into the to the bridge, which I think is a kind of a a very interesting metaphor. You know, uh, in a lot of ways, because you know Elizabeth Park is partly in West Hartford and partly in this Hartford. This is on the West right? Hartford True. side. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, know that's so funny that you should say that because it, except for the, uh, you know, there's very little color in this picture, and so there was some uh, yellow co color over here and some. Uh, this was, I, I made it a violet color. It wasn't really such a violet color in, in the nature. Sure. But in order, I would ordinarily put the bridge, I would like the bridge to be a little bit to the left or right ordinarily sure. for the, just for the composition of it. But in order to have the colors in there, I had, this is the photo I had to take. Right. And so there's the bridge right in the center and it worked, you know, right. like you said, you know, yes. it did, yeah, it did yeah, work. It, but it was, uh, it was just a necessity so that I could get the little bit of color that there was that day 
into the picture. I needed that white tree in there. and yeah. uh, The color other than the greens. <laughs> yeah, the greens. <laughs> there ain't much in there so, but green. <laughs> so could you talk a bit for our audience about how you do mix greens and how you, what that yes. process I, is well, like? Well, I use, uh, I have um, watercolors that come out of a little squeeze tube. And then I have watercolors that are that uh, are dry. Mm -hmm. You know, both oh. I have both kinds. So I have, a, you know, uh, several greens that are right there. And then um, I I often am mixing with white. It makes it opaque. You know, if you use the the white color that comes out of the tube, you can get an opaque paint. And and uh, so that if the thing that's underneath is not exactly what you want, you wait for it to dry, and come over it again with with your new color, whatever it is that you want. For uh, for bright spots where the where the sun is shining, this is a shot that I uh, took about uh, eight o'clock in the morning. So the sun is not so high in the sky, and it's hitting you know not everything, but some things. And that's that's I tried to show that. And so a lot of white paint and yellow paint will be used to do that. You know to bring to to highlight things and make the light right. uh, make the light light places stand out. Sometimes the light is you're looking through uh, dark places into a light place. That's the way it is in the morning. You know. And, uh, and here right. too, a little bit right. of light shining through the top. Right. And so you try to, you know, you, you try to get the, it's going to be yellow or bluish green, you know, it right. always will be, mm -hmm. uh, either on the yellow side or the blue side. And, and the evergreens like to be a little bluer, mm -hmm. and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the light places like to be a little yellower. And so I, I mix a lot of, uh, but they, I, I find when I put my painting side by side, that there's really only about four or five grains in there. You know? Okay, and do but you? I, and I, I guess you I say, love those colors. <laughs> I think I do. Is it is it largely a, a experimental trial and error? To trial and error is my and technique. And yeah, <laughs> yeah it has been for a now, long time. On the left side there, I noticed that you have you know the trees. You you're actually kind of putting little dots in there of color. Yeah, it's dots, right? And That's one of the things is. that I've noticed over the years is that optically. Your your eye actually mixes color on the mm -hmm. canvas. Mm -hmm. It's very strange, mm -hmm. but you know, in a lot of ways, you can see that there, and it's very right. soft and lush, and you know, very um, uh, you know, it's not just one green color. It's a combination of like different hues. It's yeah, really well, you, what the the you pointillist want it to stand did. out. Yeah. Surat and the yeah, pointillist. Surat yeah. was the whole idea of mixing color in your eye, and it, it you know, he was using maybe ten colors, um, then he would you know put them in proximity to each other and your, your mm -hmm. brain would actually mix them. So that's why the experience of seeing uh, visual art sometimes is very different from the real thing and in some ways better and well, sometimes it's an illusion. worse. It's an illusion. If you look at it, it's just, it's just right. splotches of, of uh, sure. you know, color. That's all it is. My grandson didn't recognize it as a picture at first. And then he said, oh, yeah, I know that's that place. So interesting. Yeah. 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 So, Mike, yes. one thing that we want to do before the show ends today yeah. is to talk a little bit more about Art Around the West End. Yeah, this is a real this, great item for people to pick up if they can get it, right? Correct. Correct. This is from last year, and this was included in Hartford News as an insert, and it, and it shows the map of the 15 artists around the neighborhood with a write-up about each artist and an image of the artwork. It's really exciting that, you know, we have all of this going on right here in our area yes. with people that are, you know, putting out effort and energy to create a moment, a special moment. So if you can participate in it, I think you'll gain greatly from it. So we and want to thank everyone. We want to yeah. thank our guests, Steve. Thank you for having and me. And thank you, Mike, and thank everyone here at West Hartford Community Television for our opportunity to talk with artists. Tune in next time uh, to our talks, and uh, we're going to try real hard to have some exciting programs for you in the near future. We might even put up a website sometime in the near future to show some of our artists' work, and we hope that you will tune in uh, next time. And thanks for being with us.